Hello and welcome to the start of my new series about beauty through the decades. I'm calling this my vintage series. I'm so happy to finally have started this project. It's something that I have been working on for months. For those of you who know me, you know I love vintage fashion so much and it's a huge part of my everyday life. So with my knowledge and skills, I thought it would be really fun to make a series dedicated to vintage fashion and vintage beauty from the 1940s all the way into 2020. I will be doing iconic hair, makeup and fashion and talking about significant moments that shaped each decade. I'm keeping everything, I'm keeping everything as authentic as possible. Everything will be uh, like everyday wearable and none of these outfits or looks will look like a Halloween costume. So today we're doing the 1940s. My inspiration comes from Jane Russell, Anita Ekberg, Lana Turner and Rita Hayworth. In my opinion, this is a classic 1940s look. So if you want to see me transform into a 1940s queen, then please keep watching. Starting with the hair, um, I have had my hair in foam rollers to style the hair and give a curl. There were no GHDs back in the 1940s. Um, women also used to curl their hair by using the wet set method, which just basically means that after you wash your hair, you curl it up and pin it into place. There's lots of different like sets and different patterns that you could do. Um, and you sleep with your hair pinned in place overnight. And in the morning, you wake up with curly hair. It's a really effective way to give your hair curl and style without damaging it. Okay, so I curled this hair up that way and then the bottom of my hair down this way and that's because we're going to do what's called victory rolls. So this was a popular 1940s hairstyle. So while I do this, I'm gonna put you guys on fast forward. Cue the montage. Now that the hair is looking suitably 1940s glam, let's move on to makeup. Okay, for priming, I am going to use my Lottie London Illuminating Coconut Primer, and I'm going to add the Revlon Colorstay Endless Glow Liquid Highlighter. I'm gonna mix these two together to give me a nice glowy base. So I'll be honest with you guys, I have actually, um, delayed starting this series. And you may have noticed that I've been a little bit absent from YouTube and Instagram. Um, I've just had a lot going on in my personal life, lost a close family member recently, which was very sad. And obviously there's still a lot going on in the world at the moment um, with the coronavirus and the protests happening in America and the UK at the moment. Like times are tough. It's, uh, it's not easy out there right now. And you know, current world events are affecting lots of different people in lots of different ways. You know, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I'm sending you love and positive vibes and I hope that you're doing okay. 
when times are tough, I always tell myself that nothing stays the same forever. So things will change and things will get better soon. For me personally, I really want to stay creative and productive and having this platform on YouTube really helps me feel like I'm still connected to my friends and family. Okay, so with the makeup, um, in the 1940s, it wasn't too dramatic. We have, you know, a basic base, um, natural full brows, a little bit of a liner and a red lip. So let's start with foundation. So I'm going to be using my Wet and Wild, Wet and Wild Photo Focus Foundation in Golden Beige. Um, I bought two of these in New Orleans back in March and I hardly use them. So <laughs> we're going to use these because they need to be used. Otherwise, all this makeup that I have in my collection is just going to go to waste. So I need to start using it. I don't want it to go to waste. Blend with a brush and a sponge. I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny dot of concealer here. So I'm going to stick with two powders. Mm two, three, two or three-ish powders. Okay, so the first powder that I'm going to be setting with is my Coty Airspun Loose Face Powder. This is an original formula since 1935. This is what the packaging looks like. So this is probably one of my favorite face powders. I have to warn you though, if you do use it, it's going to smell like your nan or your grandma. Like it's very heavily scented, but I kind of like that. So, I'm just going to tap some into the lid. So I'm going to take a nice big fluffy brush and we are going to press this into the skin. Now our face is covered in set. Let's do brows. Okay, so 1940s eyebrows. They were dark, they were natural, and they were full. So I'm just gonna use my pencil to follow the natural shape of my eyebrows and just fill it in a little bit, but keep it pretty natural. Brows are not meant to be twins, they are meant to be sisters. <laughs> Okay, I'm feeling a little pale, so let's add some color to the face. So, um, I don't have a red blush. Um, rouge, rouge is what uh, women used to wear on their cheeks. So I'm just going to use my most neutral colored blush, which is Orgasm by NARS. So I'm just gonna add some to the apples of my cheeks and up a little bit. So I'm just gonna add blush here, like that. So this is a glowy pinky colored blush. And then for bronzer, I'm using my new favorite butter bronzer by Physicians Formula. So I'm just gonna, I know that like contouring wasn't like a big thing in the 40s. So I'm just gonna a little bit on the cheeks, just a little, it's a little, little contour, like a baby soft, just like a little touch. For a little subtle highlight, I'm using my Chanel Infamous Chanel Illuminating Powder. This is like a very, very, um, a very subtle powder with like a very subtle glow and like a little bit of color in it. So I'm just going to use a tiny bit of that on my cheekbones. Let's do our lipstick. So in the 1940s, red lipstick was the color. Apparently, uh, I was reading that apparently Hitler hated the color red, so women used to love wearing red lipstick to um, show their support <laughs> against the Nazis, which I thought was really interesting. And that's also um, where the name Victory Rolls came from for the hairstyle, because Victory was all about like winning, winning the war, so that's how that name came about. Okay, so the the shade of red that was worn was really like a true red and slightly on the warmer side. So the truest red lipstick that I have is by Fenty Beauty and this is called Uncensored. So this was one of the original liquid lipsticks that Fenty Beauty came out with 
and um, I love this color. I've had this for about a year. How old is this? I think it's probably expired. <laughs> it's gonna expire soon. Um, but that's okay, we're gonna use it. Um, but yeah, I find with this, this liquid lipstick is so good that I don't actually even use a lip liner. So the lip shape was um, very overdrawn on the outer edges of the top lip. So when I use this lipstick, what I do is I paint a line down the middle to get off anything excess on the applicator. And then I start on the outer edge and I drag it from the outer corner down towards the center. And at the same time, I kind of move my lip in the opposite direction and that just gives me a really nice clean one sharp line instead of trying to do it bit by bit. And the other side, fill it in. How good does that look? And then to do the top lip, I cheat, I just go like this. And it kind of stamps out sort of where I need to go. So to do the top lip, I go where the cupid's bow points, I start there and come down. And then I go down here. And one clean line. And I do all of that without having to put this back into the bottle. That's just one application. Beautiful, perfect red lipstick. There was no dramatic eye makeup in the 1940s. It was kept very simple and very basic. So what I'm going to do is a really simple eyeliner. And um, before I do the liner though, I'm going to take a brown shadow from my Huda Beauty Smoky Obsessions palette and just kind of add a little bit to this top lash line just to soften the line and make it not look too harsh. So just taking a little bit of brown eyeshadow on a pencil brush. So some people do quite a dramatic wing and quite a dramatic um, eye makeup look when they're doing vintage makeup but dramatic eyeliner didn't really come into everyday wear until the 1950s and 60s so in my future videos that are coming you'll see uh, makeup changing and being more dramatic okay so now that I'm happy just with like a little subtle brown line across the lids now I'm going to add some black liquid liner uh, I'm going to add some black liquid eyeliner um, and I'm not going to do a huge dramatic wing like I said it's just going to be a really simple baby wing nice and simple okay so in uh, and I'm going to add some mascara so while I was researching for um, make, the making of this series I learned that um, because everything was rationed in the 40s, you know, all materials and resources were um, going towards the war. Um, you know, um, women, some women, you know, couldn't afford makeup and you couldn't buy makeup. Um, so, um, if you couldn't like go out and buy some mascara, women used to use a cork. And what they would do is they would burn the end of a cork so it sort of turned into like a charcoal and they would use that charcoal and paint that on their eyes as eyeliner and the brows and as mascara isn't that crazy imagine using burnt cork on your eyes also women if they couldn't afford lipstick or blush they some women even used beetroot to stain their cheeks and stain their lips and it made me think like if i couldn't buy makeup what I would use, like what household things I could use to, you know, still do a look. I don't know. Like, how would you do your makeup if you didn't have makeup? Like, would you bother? Would you use, would you use fruit and vegetables and burnt corks to apply to your face? Maybe that's a good idea for a challenge video. Do your makeup without doing, using any actual makeup. One thing that really did surprise me is that people wore eyelashes back then. Well, I guess maybe not your everyday look but actress actresses hollywood actresses um wore eyelashes so we're gonna put some on nothing too dramatic nothing too wispy these are just a simple pair also while i was doing research for this series i learned that in the 1940s the you know everything that happened with the great depression and world war ii that like dramatically affected fashion because all fabric was rationed 
um, and that is one of the reasons why you saw hemlines on women's dresses get shorter because you women couldn't afford to have a full skirt or a full dress made um, and um, also I found which was really interesting is that back in the 1940s women used to wear nylon stockings um, always um, and these nylon stockings had a seam up the back of the leg and so because they couldn't afford to purchase nylon stockings anymore they used to paint their legs with a color similar to the stockings and draw a seam up the back of their legs with like an eyeliner or something and I was like I guess it's kind of like the original spray tan you know the original body makeup I thought that was really well, that was really interesting and you might see like some like rockabilly and like pin-up models and influencers have a seam up the back of their leg tattooed and that's what that's from. So applying lashes, I tilt my head back and hold a mirror down below. Alright, now that we are looking suitably 1940s glam, let's go upstairs, put my dress on and we can do a complete look. I chose this dress for my wardrobe because I think it captures the elements of the 1940s female aesthetic. Um, it's a kind of like a uniform, kind of like a military style dress. And that's, I think that's reflective of World War II. And it's also reflective of women working in the factories while the men are out fighting in the war. And um, I think, yeah, it's really strong, it's really bold, uh, and it's the right length the, um, down to the, just below the knee. And this is the first time in fashion that women have worn midi length dresses. And so now whenever you see a midi length dress, um, you know that it originated in the 1940s. Obviously there were many different looks um, during this decade. However, I feel like this look is glamorous and wearable. I dress like this quite often. Actually, I wore this dress just recently to a picnic with my husband. Um, it is my first time doing the victory rolls though, but this, this makeup is so classic. I mean, eyeliner, lashes and red lipstick is like a classic timeless makeup look all right this brings us to the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed watching me transform into a 1940s glam gal um i love the hair i love the makeup and i love the dress and this i think is a really wearable look um please stay tuned because i have lots of new videos coming out i'm doing decade after decade after decade and it's going to be really fun if you guys like this video then please subscribe 90 percent of my viewers are not subscribed so you just need to click this button here that red button that says subscribe you need to click on that <laughs> thank you so much for hanging out with me i hope you guys have a great day or a great night wherever you are in the world sending lots of love and positive vibes your way i'll see you in my next video bye Okay, <laughs> glasses off. And I am using the VO5 Invisible, VO5, <laughs> studying. I'm using the VO5 Invisible, oh, why can't I say that? I'm using the VO5 Invisible, wow. Why is there a knot in my hair? Really pale.